There we are. This is it. It'll be okay. It's absolutely torrential. Look at the view over here. She's uh, been with me longer, so she's far better trained. many many months and Ryan he tried to protect cactus from the storm and rain wow, <laughs> and this one is safe but that one need to protect and it's really good now we got rain come back again wow so our book garden is Meat, water, and bread. <laughs> Happy. It's raining. Rain. <laughs> oh, you have to water the garden. <laughs> so we've already had one casualty. I mean, this is my fault anyway. I bought this piece of junk cover for the car. Then we covered it with plastic and obviously the plastic got weighed down and it just collapsed. So, luckily it didn't scratch the car from what I can see, but it's completely collapsed in on itself from the weight. We've been talking about building a garage forever, but you see, it's just, we just never got around to it because you know, there was a pig house to build or there was a chicken house to build or there's something and I mean, this is just a piece of crap. The soil's soft and it's just gonna have to, we just have to rip it out. But then we're back to the problem again of no cover for the sun. And you can't go under that tree there because that big tree, when the start, when the lightning hits it, huge branches fall off and fall down. So really no solution yet, apart from build a proper garage for this for this car see this is really getting quite flooded now guys she's absolutely pissed right through so it's okay here we are this is it this is the story of our place of our cottage and the seasons we go through keeps it keeps it fun and entertaining uh always keeps you on your toes and your feet it's never boring you know what i mean you know you always got some kind of challenge to deal with Oh no, this is our maple tree here. It's just been hit with the heavy rain. This is another thing, like I think I mentioned it on the vlog recently, the extreme heat damages the plants that we put in here. And we, we care a lot about these plants, particularly these papayas as well. They get blown down a lot through the intense wind because they reach so high and the wind gets them up there. But this, you know, something like this, we've grown it for a couple of years and we don't want to see it snap or fall or, or fall over. It, it means something to us. I know for some people, you think, well, why do you care? But we care. Each one of these plants in this garden, we planted from the avocado over there to the bananas here. We planted them all. There was nothing here before. It was just mud like this, pure mud. So we, we care when, when something gets broken and damaged. This one, I put a support on there. So it's going to be fine. It'll be okay. You can see here that this is where the, the land just raised up. I just nearly slipped on my ass there. It's raised up here and it floods down there to the path. So, oh my God. Oh, I'm slipping and sliding in all this mud here, guys. So for the Turkey area, their pond is completely flooded here. That's not good. The babes are in here, the turkeys, they're okay. They have some shade. Five, six, seven, eight. I always count them when I see them just to make sure. Chickens have got the best place in the house. They've got a very, very comfortable area to, to sit. It's absolutely torrential. Look at the view over here. Look at how their noses are all, look at the turkey's noses. It's usually they've got a droopy nose on the front and it's all coiled up. I guess it works a little bit like, uh, well, you know what? When it gets cold, it all shrivels up. But this is coming down quite heavy and I'm gonna to have to get in now because it's getting a bit crazy. 
Um, yeah, this is getting a bit intense. So I'm gonna get in, I'm absolutely drenched. Back in the bamboo days, we were subject to the elements. We were in those bamboo huts. So when it came down heavy like this, we were stuck, yeah? But now it's nice to be able to close the cottage door and the kids are in here playing. And you see, it's nice and quiet. We did a double insulation in the roof. So you don't hear the patter of the rain in here. Nice and sturdy and, and safe and comfortable uh, for the kids. So it's a whole different way of living. The cottage style living is the way to live, guys, in my opinion. And we've got little baby Hugo in here. Are you all right? I mean, most of the time these days, we have the kids, all the kids here. Better here in, in the cottage where they can play. We've got lots of toys. They're with Hugo. Uh, he's, he's tired at the moment. He needs a little sleep, but I'd say like 90% of the time, just at night time, they're not here, but 90% of the time, the waking hours, the kids are here in the cottage with us. And they're welcome. They become part of the family now. And, um, and I will, I did say I'd, I'd show a little bit on my sugar monkeys, on my sh sugar gliders. So I'm going to, a lot of people have asked about them. So I'm just going to show you now a little bit about the sugar gliders. Uh, since you asked. So a lot of people asked about the little creature that are creatures that I carry around in my pocket sometimes and they are sugar gliders and I did a lot of research before getting sugar gliders. They're not difficult pets to keep but they require a lot of attention, a lot of time. So if you're not if you're not seen one before this is this is one. This is Cookie. She's uh, been with me longer so she's far better trained. Good way to train them is to put them through your hands like this. So you make like a tunnel. You want to hand train them. Put them through your hands like this. This one's a little Joey baby. So I started with this one much younger than my other one. The other one is older. You have to keep them in twos, um, at least twos, because if not, if they, you leave them on their own, they get quite depressed and they, they will self-harm. That's when she's grouchy. That sound that you just heard there means she's being very grouchy. That means she doesn't like what's happening or if you make a noise or something like that, she'll go, Meh. And usually when you first get them, they, they're really grouchy and they will bite you and it hurts. Their bite really hurts. But they like to be like held like this quite tightly. No, not too tight, not suffocating them. But they like to be in enclosed and in comfortable spaces because that's where they live, especially the joeys, in the pouch of the mother. You may have seen them quite similar to flying squirrels. They jump and they open up like this and yeah, they glide down through the air. But they like to be compacted like this and put in the pocket. They, they want to feel quite safe and warm. So Cookie, she, she's kind of used to me holding her like this. She doesn't actually like to be running around. Um, when she's running around, she's looking for a place to hide, to, to get comfortable in, in again. They sleep like 16 hours of the day. So they'll sleep in your pocket or they'll sleep like in your hand, like this, once they're trained. You have to handle them a lot. To, to ever get them to trust like this, you'll have to handle them a lot. Uh, if anybody has ever had shirt gliders before, that you know that uh, to get to this point takes hours and hours of interaction, days, weeks, months of interaction. Um, once they're bonded, they live quite a long time, like 12, 15 years, like something along those lines. I'm no expert on this, but I'm just sharing what I know about them. And um, once they're bonded though, they really are bonded. And we have a lot of trust together. Like it takes a lot of trust for a sugar glider to have it hold, hold in the hand like this. Um, usually even people that have had sugar gliders for a long time, they will use bonding pouches and things like that where, so they don't have direct contact with the hand because they can give you a nasty nip. Um, so yeah, this is, this is Cookie. I spent much more time with Cookie than I have Cutie. The other thing with sugar gliders, they need a good space to, to mess around at night, so you need a nice big cage. Uh, so if I release her now a little bit, she gets a bit scared and worried. Like she doesn't like that. She likes to be, she likes to be like in, in a little ball, in a safe, protected ball. Um, she'll try and stuff herself back in now, see? So she likes to be in a safe, protected ball and, and doesn't, doesn't like to uh, be out in the open uh, very much. And so she'll eat things like mealworms, like her diet's like mealworms, and I have two females. I can't get, um, I can probably show you uh, Cutie, Tis named them. 
I'm gonna show you Cutie, but she is much less trained, far more grouchy, and she's a real biter at the moment because I haven't had enough time. She's a new one that we got, as I learned that you can't keep them on their own. So they're, they're amazing, a little bit grouchy. When she grouches like that, you gotta be a little bit careful because that's her warning sign that I'm not happy and I'm gonna bite if you um, keep doing what you're doing. So let me put Cookie away and I'll see if I can get Cutie out. She'll bite and see. Oh, she's a real nipper. No, she's not happy at all. She really likes to stay um, in a ball, but she'll just bite you. Like she's, she gets super unhappy with uh, being handled because she's not been handled much. So sometimes like you, to bond with them, you might just like hold them like this and stroke them slowly. Like, and it's a slow process, the bonding process. But um, you see Cutie, <laughs> I'm trying, there's the, there she is. I gotta be very careful because, because she can really bite. She really hurts when she bites. So she's a, a full white sugar glider. So, and again, we gotta spend a lot more time um, kind of getting, getting her used to being handled. It can take months and months like right now she'll just like rah, rah, rah. take months and months and so there you go these are the, the sugar gliders get to know each other and be like and teach them that you are no threat once they know your scent and they know you're, you're not a threat then they'll be far more friendly towards you and she'll just try and dig her head in and, and get safe in a ball she's not comfortable at all being handled not like like Cookie is very comfortable being handled because it's just about the hours that you put in and you socialize it. They do enjoy socializing after that once they're not scared. They enjoy the interaction and that's why like you shouldn't really have sugar glides if you work long hours or you can't spend a lot of time with them because they like to be handled, they like to be let out, they like to run around, they like to have company, they're very social creatures and when they bond they really bond for life. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a lifetime connection. So. Maybe you have any questions about them, yeah, I'll answer your questions, but that's just been a bit of an insight onto uh, the, the sugar gliders, Cookie and Cutie. I'm not too sure how good my camera picks this up at night time. As you know, I never, if you watch this vlog, you know I never really film at night. Let me see if I can give her a bit of light. But uh, I'm actually filming this just to actually hear the cicadas. This beautiful, beautiful sound. Some might find that annoying, like if you live here, but for me, I love it. Camel's watering a tree over here. I like the sound of the cicada, babe. Thai people that eat cicada. Yeah, the Thai, well, Thai people eat anything. Can I like it? I. If it walks, she'll eat it. Kinda carp, mate. That's how Thai people eat kinda. Kinda carp, mate. Yeah, it's expensive too. I they eat, like they eat the carp as well. Yeah. This is the carp. But yeah, it's. Uh, I put the light up on the camera so you should be able to see a bit more. Beautiful sands, guys. It's always a changing landscape. And not really, you have the toads coming out. The toads come out at this time. There's one. They live under the fridge. They come out around this time to eat. So although it's going to sound quite lame to some people, especially when you've got some Thailand vloggers covering all the bars and the, the nightclubs and the girls and all that kind of stuff, um, but what makes me happy, why I get happy, I'm going to show you. It's when this happens, guys. When I get a shoot like that on the cactus, this one's been cut. i got three little pups there, two little pups on here, 
and it makes me happy because we're propagating them you know in here as well on the San Pedro here you have an SSO2 sacred succulent cross with Eileen You've got two pups coming up there and the SSO2 Helen two pups the Trichoceros Bridgie medicine man two pups there so and here you have also the SSO2 Helen a little pup coming up there every day when I see a new pup come up or a pup growing I'm like oh yes result because that means you're gonna get a whole brand new cactus grow and the San Pedro are very rare here in this country and eventually we'll be farming them and we'll produce many many of them so that's what you want to see now what makes me equally sad is this is the uh, the bee capi vine and it's lost all of its leaves and I don't think I've been able to keep it um, alive so the, uh, this kind of thing makes me really sad to see a plant not survive the the process uh, the, the planting so yeah I'm not happy about this Toxicity of my city, of my city. Yo! Take it in silence, it's me. Somewhere. It's Thank you. 